Hey, and welcome to Oil for the Journey. I'm Layden, and I will be your reader for today. Thank you so much for joining us um, on Christmas Eve as we continue to close out the year reading through Revelations. Um, and this coincides with Bridges for Peace Bible reading plan called Ignite the Truth. Um, before we begin diving into God's Word, I just want to uh, bow in prayer as we enter into this time with Him. Dear Lord, I just thank you uh, for this day and for this year um, that we are able to reflect on what you have done for us, um, all the blessings that you have given us this year, as well as just remembering the, the reason for this season, Lord, um, the ultimate gift that you um, were able to give the world, Lord. I thank you so much for allowing us to be able to dive into your word every day. Um, and I pray as we go into the new year, that we will continue to just really focus on you and your will, Lord. Um, I pray that we will have a yearning in heart to know you more, Lord, that we can dive deeper into a relationship with you, Lord. Um, I pray blessings over um, anybody who is listening or watching, Lord. Um, I pray that you will just bring them peace throughout this season, entering into the new year, Lord. I know that this is a difficult time for so many people, um, but I pray that they focus their eyes on you and their hearts on you, Lord, um, and that they know that within you, um, they can be content and that is all that we need, Lord. Um, I pray blessings over this new year, Lord, um, that you will just allow us to walk with you daily, Lord, that you will just breathe life into us, um, restoration, Lord, and I pray that we will continue to um, turn our eyes towards you and everything that we do. Um, I thank you so much for uh, what you have done and continuing to protect us, Lord. Um, I pray that as it gets closer and closer to your return, Lord, um, that you will just draw us nearer and nearer. Um, I thank you so much for allowing us to um, just be able to, to hear you during this time, Lord. I pray that uh, you will just give us the, the heart to let it soak in and sink in um, to our utmost being, Lord. Thank you so much um, for just blessing us this year and in the future, Lord. Um, and I pray that you will just open up a new realm um, to people so that they can know you. In Jesus' name, amen. So we'll begin with Revelation chapter 1 um, and go all the way to chapter 3. The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place, he made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take it to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. John, to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is, and who was, and who is to come and from the seven spirits before his throne and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and has made us to be kingdoms and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be the glory and power forever and ever, amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all of his people on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the, the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephemus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyria, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like the son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze, glowing in a furnace, 
and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write, therefore, what you have, seeing what is now and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds and hard work and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You are preserved and have endured the hardship for my name, and have not given weary. Yet I hold that this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider now how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from the place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicola, Nicolaitans, which, also, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life which is in the paradise of God. To the angel of the church of Smyrna, write, These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know that you slander of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. To the angel of the church of Pergamum, write, these are the words of him who has the sharp, double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne, yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, and even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was put to death in your city where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. There are some among you who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin, so they are food sacrifices to idols and committed sexual immorality. Likewise, you will also have those who hold to the teachings of Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore, otherwise. I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden, of the hidden manna. I also will give the person a white stone and a new name written on it. No, known only to the one who receives it. To the angel of the church of Thyra writes, These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire, and whose feet are like burning, burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are now doing more than you did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate the women Jezebel, who call herself a prophet. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual morality and the eating of food sacrifices to idols. I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is willing, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her out of the bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely, unless they repent of her ways. I will strike the children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds, 
and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Now I say to the rest of you in Thyros, to you who do not hold to her teachings and have learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any other burden on you except to hold on to what you have until I come. So the one who is victorious and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. That one will rule with them an iron scepter and will dash them to pieces like poverty, like pottery. Just as I have received authority from my father, I will also give that one the morning star. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the spirit says to the churches. To the angels of the church of Sardis, write, there are the words of him who holds to the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds and you have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have found your deeds unfinished to the sight of my God. Remember therefore what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will call like a thief. And I will not know at what time I will come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis that I have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me, dressed in white, for they are the worthy. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge the name before my Father and his angels. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come to the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of the heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church of Laod Laodicea, write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you were neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich. I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne, whoever has ears, has ears let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And that finishes up chapter three. We'll continue with chapter four, um, but I hope that you have a wonderful Christmas Eve and Merry Christmas and spend time with your family and friends and remember the true reason for this season as we enter into the new year. Bye.